Hey everybody, it is Monday, so that means it is our storybook day. Today we are going to be doing the book called Do You Do and Did You Do? And it is written by Nick Page and illustrated by Sarah Baker. Hello, Mr. Music Man. How do you do? Do you do a didgeridoo? One that blows a low wahoo? So, do you do a didgeridoo? No, we didgeridoo. Do you do a didgeridoo, one that blows a low wahoo? I'd paint it purple or yellow or blue. I could paint it in every kind of hue. I'd even play one you can see right through. So do you do a didgeridoo? No, we didgeridoo don't. Do you do a didgeridoo? One that blows a low wahoo? Oh, Mr. Music Man, tell me true. I want to, to duet with my best friend Sue, this very musical kangaroo. I brought all my friends from down at the zoo to ask you to make my dreams come true. So do you do a didgeridoo? No, we didgeridoo. Do you do a didgeridoo, one that blows a low wahoo? I could imitate bird sounds just for you. I can make it squawk like a cockatoo, or imitate the pigeon's coo, or the plaintive cry of a lone curlew, or sound like an owl to what to woo, or the angry grunt of an old emu. As it mourns for the fact that it never flew, but tell me, please, oh tell me, do. Do you do a didgeridoo? No, we didgeridoo don't. Do you do a didgeridoo? One that blows a low wahoo? I've searched from here to Timbuktu. I've been to Rome and to Peru. I played in the band with a tiny shrew, a caribou, and a maganoo. We played the blues on an old kazoo. Some people called it a hubba-baloo. But now I want to play something new. So do you do a didgeridoo? No, we didgeridoo don't. One that blows a low wahoo. I could serenade guests at a barbecue, or play for somebody cooking a stew, or Italians eating tiramisu, or Indians cooking sadalu, or play for barbers as they shampoo, or sailors get a new tattoo. If you don't have one, then it's a do. Goodbye, farewell, and toodaloo. So, Mr. Music Man, let's review. Do you have a didgeridoo? No, we didgeridoo-don't. So do you do a didgeridoo? One that blows a low wahoo? I'll take it away with me, if that's what I'll do. I could play it while paddling in my canoe, or sauntering down the avenue, or shivering in my small igloo, or staying in teepees among the Sioux. So please, Mr. Music Man, tell me true. Do you do a didgeridoo? Oh, please tell me, tell me do. Do you do a didgeridoo? No, we didgeridoo. Wait a second. Yes, 
we do a didgeridoo? Yes, Mr. Customer, just for you. You can paint it in purple or yellow or blue. You can play a duet with a kangaroo Sue. You can serenade everyone down at the zoo. You can play while paddling in your canoe. You can play it in Peru or Timbuktu. You can play it instead of your old kazoo. You can play it by the side of the barbecue with the shrew, the gnu, and the caribou. And listen, it blows a low wahoo. So yes, we do a didgeridoo. What do you want? Just one or two. And shall I have it wrapped for you? changed my mind. The end. So the instrument that that book is about is actually a real instrument, but it's not one that we play here in the United States. This instrument is actually from the Aboriginal people of Australia. Um, and it is called the didgeridoo, or to hear you, just depending on who you ask, there are different pronunciations that you can use. And I actually have a didgeridoo here at my house with me. Now, didgeridoos are oftentimes very long, so as you can tell, this one does not even quite fit all the way into the uh, screen here. Um, this one's about four feet long, so it's just a little bit shorter than I am. Traditionally, didgeridoos are made out of eucalyptus that has been hollowed, hollowed out. So if I can get this up, you can see that this is just a hollowed out piece of almost like a wood-like material, but it's eucalyptus that is very, it's a very common plant in um, Australia. And you'll notice that a lot of instruments from a lot of different cultures use the materials that they have around them to create their instruments. So this one is made out of a hollow piece of eucalyptus. Usually they are quite long, so it can be four to six feet long. Um, they're not usually a very small instrument. They're, they're usually pretty tall. Um, at the top of the instrument, there is a mouthpiece on it. It is made out of beeswax, and that is because if you were to put your mouth on eucalyptus for an extended period of time, it would be very abrasive and it would cause you to get a rash um, on your mouth that can be very uncomfortable. So in order to get around that, they put just some beeswax on there just to protect their mouths and their skin from the chemicals in the eucalyptus. Also on my didgeridoo, I have a traditional type of Aboriginal artwork. It is called dot painting. Um, usually they will use these to display different things using symbols or um, creatures from their environment. So my didgeridoo has a snake painted on it, which I think is pretty cool. Now, the way that this instrument is played is kind of like the brass instruments that we talked about last week, so our trumpet. You play it by doing a a lot lower than what you would do for the trumpet. In order to change the sound, you move your tongue in your mouth, and the Aboriginal people would use this instrument to imitate different types of birds or other animals in their environment. Um, they also do a technique that is called circular breathing, which allows them to play for a very long period of time. I personally cannot do that, so apologize, I am going to be breathing in between um, each little set. But I'm going to play just a little bit on the didgeridoo so you can kind of hear that low wahoo sound that the book was talking about. <laughs> Wednesday, we are talking about 
the composer um, Giuseppe Verde, and I'll post some links to some of his music on there for you. It'll be very cool. For Thursday, we are doing a body percussion chant called FOE Tai Tai A. That one's going to be really awesome. And then for Friday, for our stream activity, we are going to be making cup telephones. So for that activity, what you're going to have ready is um, two disposable cups. Um, I'm going to be reusing my purple ones from last week because they already have a hole poked in the bottom. So if you have um, the chicken clucker and you don't have any extra cups, you can repurpose your chicken clucker. You will also need a long piece of string, uh, yarn. I'm using my cooking twine again because that's all I have. Um, but just a long piece of string to connect your cups together. And that is all for today. Thank you guys so much. If you have any questions about the didgeridoo, if you just want more information about it, let me know. And I will send you some extra links to some videos on that instrument because it's really, really cool. Have a good rest of the day, guys.